right? Everyone, buckle up, because the winter barreling toward us is already signaling that it's going to be a formidable one. And I'm not talking about the mild, forgettable winters we've been sleepwalking through in recent years. I'm talking about a season that could seize much of the country with brutal cold. Persistent snowfall and unrelenting Arctic blasts that simply refuse to loosen their grip. For years, El Nino has quietly been the force behind our gentler seasons. The Pacific warms, the polar jet stream lifts north. Much of the northern United States experiences relatively tame winters while true Arctic air stays trapped over Canada. But now that entire setup is collapsing. El Nino is fading rapidly. When the Pacific cools, the entire winter blueprint begins to shift. The jet stream behaves differently. It dives, buckles, and meanders in ways that make the weather more chaotic and, frankly, more dangerous. And when the jet stream turns erratic, the door swings open for polar vortex disruptions. We're talking about cold waves. It's powerful enough to reach all the way to the Gulf Coast. With weeks of punishing Arctic air that simply won't let go, after years of soft, mild winters. This one could feel like stepping back into the early 2010s relentless, unforgiving, and absolutely brutal. A major part of this shift comes from ENS Otha El Nino's Other Oscillation. If you're new here, think of ENSO as the backbone of U.S. winter weather. El Nino warms the Pacific. La Nina cools it. Neutral phases let other atmospheric forces take control. Dot El Nino pushes the jet north. La Nina shoves it south. Neutral years? Neutral years can be chaotic, allowing wild cards like polar blocking and sudden stratospheric warming to dominate. And here's the headline. NOAA has just issued a La Nina advisory, officially confirming that we're entering a winter driven by La Nina dynamics, a pattern historically known for volatile weather. Extreme temperature swings and deep Arctic air plunging far into the lower 4.8 by the way. If you want a forecast for your city or region, drop it in the comments. I'll reply to as many as I can. Also, if you enjoy the video, subscribing to my channel would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's continue. If you remember the winter of 2013-2014, that's the type of setup we're beginning to see echoes of. Back then, we experienced unrelenting, cold, powerful high-latitude blocking and several polar vortex collapses that made it one of the coldest winters in modern history. Chicago endured more than 25 days below zero. The Deep South froze solid. Texas suffered widespread power failures and infrastructure breakdowns. More recently, the February 2021 Texas freeze proved that extreme cold still has the power to cripple communities. Now, let me be clear. This doesn't guarantee a carbon copy of 2013, but the signals we are seeing. Neutral Pacific waters, a developing ridge trough pattern east of the Rockies, and a negative NAO all point toward high odds of sustained cold, especially in January and February. So what might this actually look like across the country? Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Northeast, expect repeated Arctic fronts. Long stretches of dangerous cold, wind chills plunging into life-threatening territory, okay? And frozen lakes and rivers that linger for weeks. The type of cold that feels like you've been transported back to an earlier, harsher era of winter central plains, Tennessee Valley. Northern South, brace for rapid temperature swings brief warm-ups, followed by sudden, shocking Arctic blasts. This is the perfect setup for ice storms, freezing rain, and extremely hazardous travel. These rapid temperature swings could create serious challenges for daily life, and people will need to be prepared for what's coming. Meanwhile, the desert southwest and west coast will be some of the few regions shielded from these Arctic invasions. Strong high-pressure ridges will keep California and Arizona mild, quiet, and relatively dry, forming a sharp contrast against the deep. Punishing cold, gripping the eastern two-thirds of the country. Now, let's talk timing. Because this part is critical. The main cold window appears to stretch from late December through early March, with the most intense, punishing cold likely peaking from mid-January through mid-February. These may be multi-week stretches of below-normal temperatures, prolonged cold waves, and repeated Arctic intrusions that could make this winter feel dramatically long and exhausting. Snowfall is going to be one of the biggest storylines. 
Cities around the asterisk asterisk Great Lake Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit, Cleveland, Grand Rapids asterisk asterisk could see near constant snowfall events. It won't be just one giant blizzard. We're talking about a conveyor belt of systems, fast moving Alberta clippers, relentless lake effect bands, weekly systems stacking snow layer by layer. Totals could climb impressively as the season progresses. Even the asterisk asterisk central plains Kansas City, Omaha, Des Moines, St. Louis asterisk asterisk may see more snow than they've received in years, but the impacts stretch far beyond how much snow falls. Prolonged cold strains are energy systems, infrastructure, and daily routines. Heating demand will spike sharply. Power grids may be stressed to their limits. Some regions could face rolling blackouts if extreme cold overlaps with peak energy use. Roads and bridges will struggle with frost heave and constant freeze-thaw cycles. Water mains may burst. Potholes will multiply. Farmers especially across the south may face major challenges with crops, livestock, and water supply. And we cannot overlook human safety. Wind chills dropping below minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit can cause frostbite within minutes. Homes without steady heat can become life-threatening very quickly. In severe winters, we often see spikes in carbon monoxide poisoning as people rely on unsafe heating methods. The most vulnerable elderly individuals, rural households, and low-income communities will be at the highest risk, even if this winter doesn't bring record-shattering snow totals. It could still become one of the most disruptive winters in recent memory, purely because of the cold and how long it lasts. This extended pattern could test the resilience of power grids, emergency response systems, and everyday life in countless communities. Now, let's shift to the broader setup. Below normal. Temperatures are already pushing deep into the northwest, where storm after storm has been hammering the region throughout the fall. This has carved a path for an extremely active, energetic winter. When we layer in the rest of the data, the cold expands east of the Rockies and spreads across the plains, it's Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and interior Northeast. This isn't guesswork. Teleconnections, sea surface temperatures, and early season atmospheric patterns all support a colder than normal start to December. And the confidence levels are incredibly high. In fact, the signals are so strong that I had to introduce a fifth tier of confidence, something I've never done before. That's how locked in this northern U.S. cold pattern appears to be. Now let's talk precipitation, because this is where the personality of winter really emerges. The southwest stays dry. Storm systems tend to avoid this region during weaker La Nina years, which is exactly where we are now. California, Southern Nevada, and the Four Corners will see below average precipitation, not zero. But low enough that snowfall chances are minimal. Meanwhile, the Northwest, Northern Plains, Midwest, and Great Lakes become storm central. Systems will slam into the Pacific Northwest, charge eastward, and occasionally dive far south bringing real snow. Potential not only to snow-heavy regions, but even to areas that rarely see meaningful snowfall. Here's the snowfall overview. Southwest, low chances northwest, strong chances. Especially in higher elevations, the sweet spot northern plains gives Midwest, gives Great Lakes, gives Ohio Valley, gives Interior, Northeast. This is the crown jewel, the exact zone where cold air collides with the storm track. All ingredients are on the table for major snow events, and if everything aligns, you could see significant high-impact accumulation, and yes, the south makes an appearance too. Miami and deep south Texas won't see snow, but northern Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, K, and northern Georgia all have above-average odds of unusual snow events. Last year proved it was possible, and this winter could deliver again. Now let's zoom out to the big picture. West Coast, split pattern. Northwest, stormy, active, cold. Southwest, quiet, mild, dry. Rockies snow-loaded even without extreme cold. East of the Rockies, cold, snowy, and primed for multiple Arctic blasts, and then the polar vortex. Signals suggest a potential early split. Possibly as soon as late November, which could shove Arctic air deep into the Midwest and Northeast by early December. Lake effect snow? It's about to ignite explosively thanks to warm lake waters colliding with incoming cold air.
The south becomes the winter battle zone rain, sleet, freezing rain, or snow, depending on storm track. The east coast, particularly interior regions, has big nor'easter potential this year. If troughs and storm systems line up perfectly, we could be looking at multiple significant coastal storms. This winter is shaping up with tension, drama, and extremes. Warm versus cold, dry versus stormy, calm versus chaos, and we'll track every twist, every arctic plunge, and every snowstorm together. All right, if you'd like a detailed forecast for your specific region or city, drop it in the comments. I'll respond individually as time allows. Commenting is completely free. Thank you guys. See you next video.